Hey, YouTube. Developer Bramboss has been releasing a whole bunch of stellar apps, and Ripple Maker is no exception to this. Uh, this is going to be weird, okay? Because this app is specifically catering towards West Coast synthesis, which um, some people just use as shorthand for weird. I mean, there's there's more to it than that. We're going to get into that. But uh, I'm, I'm going to lay it on the line. This is going to be super weird. I'm going to try to make it not annoying, though, okay? That's, that's my only promise to you. It is definitely going to be weird, and it is going to hopefully not be annoying. Uh, so let's, let's get into this. Uh, this is a, a semi-patchable synth. So it's got a whole bunch of uh, stuff. You can just start playing with it immediately, dragging around notes and activating notes on the sequencer. And that seems like a nice kind of calm uh, sequence to start off with. And you see we've got sections here for the oscillator, the slope, and the uh, low pass gate, not a low pass filter. So Let's start off here on the left with the uh, oscillator because this has got some uh, fun stuff in it. Just, just there, like this fold, as you can see on the oscilloscope, is dramatically changing the shape of that square. Like that is definitely not a square anymore, right? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's folding back any clipped portion of the square as it's uh, being shaped and we can further emphasize that with the push you can actually hear the difference more than you can see it like now it's kind of gone back into a square but it's like a reverse square <laughs> with horns so that right there is a lot of fun you've got uh, FM where we can give it some sort of a, a source here as a modulator like the uh, LFO And since this is so patchable, we can now get even crazier with this if we want. We can say, let's use noise to change the uh, LFO rate. And we can calm that down a little bit by lowering this knob. Now, the knob isn't being animated, and that, that's something that some people uh, were annoyed by. But what you need to know is wherever that uh, knob is set, that's the maximum. It, it won't go past that. So you use it to shape it down. like. That's as calm as it can get. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop doing that now because I know that some people are gonna get annoyed with that real fast. And I'm gonna stop the FM and start to explain the slope. So this is a uh, basically just an attack decay envelope, but it's it's got this curve knob so you can control how that works. But we're not gonna do any of that because what this is really is a second oscillator. Uh, if you turn on the key track mode, um, let me actually stop doing that for a second here. Um, if I take the output of this and make this the input here on the low pass, we're no longer gonna hear the first oscillator. So now as it's playing, but you're not hearing anything, if I turn on the key track and give it the CV out, which is the pitch, uh, stands for control voltage. Hmm. Oh, that's right. And turn on cycle. There we go. So you hear this D now is actually changing, right? So we got So now we we've got an entirely different type of oscillator that we can now shape like this. And now the curve becomes kind of like the tuning. Wow, that is looking crazy on the oscilloscope. 
I haven't actually played with this while I had the scope up, so now I'm gonna get distracted by this because I'm curious to see how this reacts. All right, we got it calmed down to uh, lower notes. And this is a really fun way of meaningfully wave shaping things. Like, there's a lot of apps that'll let you uh, make your own uh, oscillator waveforms, but usually that's like draw it in and, and half the users aren't even gonna know what the hell they're doing. So, this is simple. You don't have to know what you're doing. There's two knobs. Oh, okay, there's three. But this is just tuning. Man, that is a wild waveform that we've got there. And, um... I I'm gonna use this now as an example here. Uh, we've got this low-pass gate. And this is where real West Coast synthesis starts to take shape here. Um, because instead of using a, a, a typical low-pass filter, uh, Buchla and all of his uh, 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 the people that, that follow that style uh, think that a low-pass filter should have kind of like its own built-in uh, voltage-controlled amplifier. So if we switch it over here into gate mode and give this a, um, a control... Uh, right now it's using slope, which is not helpful, so let's use the gate. So, as I move this over, now we're filtering. But if I move this now into gate, it's filtering, and you hear that, that, uh, click, 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 because this, uh, gate is just an on, off, on, off, so that's not a, a very good control, but I wanted to show you how that was working. We could shape our own kind of control here with, the using the envelope, which is traditionally just going to control the, the main VCA. Uh, so let's, let's try that, um... So, if I pull it all the way to the left, right now it's just acting as a VCA, uh, where it's it's modulating just the volume for this second weird oscillator. And I could take uh, the output of that and the output of the first one. So you can hear that none of that's being filtered. Now, instead of doing that, though, we could do this, this kind of gated effect here, bring in a little bit of filtering. It's a little bit easier to hear that with the uh, bandpass. So it's the 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 theory is that uh, when you're releasing the filter, things should be louder, and then it comes down and blooms. Um, this is done with vactrols and all kinds of other weird shit that we don't need to know about. Uh, so you you might have heard about vactrols. So like it's one of those things that you hear in uh, uh, hardware synthesis is is like this uh, cool thing that you got to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars for. Now you get it here. It's it's a knob. Vectrals. So, yeah, the, the frequency isn't doing anything when it's in full gate, so that's working as intended. But when you got it halfway up, you're getting the gate and the filter, so you can kind of shape it normally. Um, now's a good time to show off the uh, sequencer here, where you can just say, give me a... A minor. Don't like that one. I really like the variation, so if you get bored with something, you can just quickly hit that and it gives you something that works with what you were working with. So, let me bring this back together here. We've got, uh, what are we listening to right now? Yeah, okay, we've got our fake oscillator here. Let's actually make the 
oscillators work together. So let's uh, take the output from our second oscillator. And you see as soon as I took that off, what we're hearing right now is oscillator one, and I should explain that all these uh, purple text with the uh, um, brackets is to let you know that that is um, a normal connection. And that means that it's it's like a, an invisible wire that's already connecting things. So like this trigger is getting a signal from the gate even when there is nothing showing you that. But as soon as you, you put something onto that, like let's put a square wave on this. Um, So you, you hear that that's, it's basically doing kind of like a weird amplitude modulation. Uh, but you, as soon as we take that away, it's it's just getting a normal gate signal. So um, that is really important to keep in mind. So if I remove this, we're hearing the first oscillator. We're not hearing the slope at all. But if I plug these two together, so you've got the oscillator ones out over here and the slope out over here, I can combine these like a mixer. So let's put this out as uh, our input here. And all right. I'm amused with how insane that sequence sounds. It sounds like clowns losing their minds. That's going to be quite fitting for what we're going to do next here. So we've got this mixer. We've got some basic control. Um, it wouldn't be West Coast Synthesis if you didn't find some useful thing to do with the random input. So let's do that. Um, using the random now to screw with the LFO, and the LFO is screwing with the frequency modulation of our first oscillator. Right. That was one of those kind of spontaneous, wow, I'm glad that worked, uh, moments that you get with West Coast Synthesis, because there's no way I could have thought that, oh yeah, let's, let's put some random through the LFO. And get, nah, let's just let's try connecting things. That's always fun. Hey, and I actually got a, a result I like, so I'm happy with that. To kind of tune it with the uh, FM amount. And limit the rate here. No, it was actually sounding better up here. That's really good. I, I'm liking that with this mad uh, sequence here. Uh, this EOC is the end of cycle. So at the end of every loop on the slope, um, whether you're using it as we are as an oscillator with the uh, cycle on, or as a uh, uh, simple uh, AD envelope, this triggers at the end of that slope. So you can use that as your own kind of gate uh, if you want to screw around with that. Like we could make that. Now instead of these notes causing the envelope to give us the uh, you know, the attack decay and all that. It's its own madness that's feeding back here now as the trigger for the envelope. And that is some madness. I just wanted to show you what we would be up to if we brought that frequency up a bit. If we take the noise and shape the first. God, that is just a mad, mad sound. So what's happening right now is we're hearing all these notes, but we're not hearing them with 
the, the, the actual key press, as it, as it were, because the, the gates now that this is spitting out are just completely ignored. Like, we're not paying attention to when a note hits, we're just paying attention to the pitch. So it's hitting its own keys whenever, and it's getting the, the notes from this. Oscillator shape a little weirder. Oh, 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 no, no, I got an idea. Let's see what happens when we put it over here into the curve. Not much. Nope, that was not a good idea. Uh, this <laughs> this first oscillator has got so much madness on it, I can't fit any more madness on it. I could try changing the gate on this, but I don't know if that's going to actually make any difference. Yeah, that wasn't uh, hot. Now, let's let's break this apart and and approach something uh, a little differently here. So, you see how I use this mixer thing? It it can mix anything. Like right now, where it's mixing audio for us, but it could just mix regular signals for us. So let's uh, break apart a lot of this. So now we're just hearing the first oscillator. And now the first oscillator is being less weird. Uh, I really liked that crazy. to the first oscillator and it's it's got the, the weird wave shaping but it's not being too weird um, right now this is just acting as basically the filter because we're not really listening too much to the, to the gating but um, it, it is doing a little bit of vectoral stuff we were talking about so now let's take the uh, slope out because this is uh, even though we're not hearing it, it's still connected to this CV out, so it's still doing that its own oscillator thing. And let's uh, take that over here, and let's take a, a signal, like, uh, random, and make that a modulator. Okay, so, right now we're just listening to the FM. Uh, this is now the modulator for this carrier. This is random as the modulator. Just got kind of a fun bounce to it. But if we switch to multiplication mode now, see if I tap that, it's actually multiplying these signals. So it's kind of like a ring modulator. Using this ring modulated output as the modulator, the FM modulator for the main oscillator. For shits and giggles, let's hear what that sounds like when we use it on the wave shape, uh, the oscillator shape. Still kind of tailor it. 
using the, the mixing volume, uh, the, the level knobs here. And because I want to keep screwing around with this, I'm going to now try taking that and sync that in the LFO here. And sending that at the fold. Not as weird as I was hoping. Using that now to control noise and noise to do the fold. It actually sounds super calm. Like we've we found the eye of the storm right here. And remember how the curve was acting as a tutor. So now using what we know about FM synthesis by changing the modulator, we're changing the tonality of the uh, carrier and basically changing the, the uh, frequency, the, the bass frequency of it. So maybe that would be more useful than this. If we slow down that rate a lot. Drums. There's a. All right. I hope I lived up to both of my promises on this. All right. It, it's definitely weird. I hope it hasn't been too annoying. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much to all my Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. <laughs> It's my birthday next month, and I've already got my present, which is this, a uh, uh, nano tank, and uh, it is awesome. I got a fish in there, but he's hiding right now. Uh, but uh, this is supposed to contain coral, and coral really expensive. So if you've enjoyed these videos, if I've helped you, in, you know, in appreciate your hobby of music making through my expertise, then would you consider please giving me some money so I can enjoy this hobby? Uh, uh, Patreon is a great way to do that because you know it's a monthly sort of little. Hey Tim, thanks, you, thank you very much. Uh, if you if you're not comfortable with doing a monthly thing, uh, you can give me a birth certificate. Uh, birth certificate. <laughs> I'm not good at begging for money. Uh, you can give me a gift certificate for my birthday. Uh, and uh, I will have links to a couple of uh, uh, coral places that uh, would be great places to give me gift certificates to. Uh, Worldwide Corals and Unique Corals both have just some really gorgeous looking corals that I'd love to put into my tank here. So uh, thank you very much. Take it easy, folks.